Hey, my name is Tomasz Poszetek. Well, and today I would like to showcase you uh, one feature that has just recently arrived at my tenant. I know it's been rolling out for a couple of moments already uh, on other tenants, but well, it just recently arrived in mine. Um, that is called environment variable of a type secret. Now, this environment variable uh, allows us to simply query data directly from Azure Key Vault and maybe possibly in the future from other Key Vaults. However, um, its main benefit or main, main advantage over the regular access to Azure Key Vaults, which uh, requires you to create a connection reference or a connection and then to use actions in Azure, no, sorry, in a, in a Cloudflow, is that um, you're not actually um, you, you don't need to grant explicit access to every user who is going to run the Cloudflow to access that key vault, but only to the user who is actually creating that um, environment variable. So there is like less people accessing the key vault. Plus, uh, you're not really sharing anywhere um, the key vault name, the key vault, uh, the, the secrets um, keys and so on. So um, in, in a short word, this is just a more safer or more secured approach to obtain uh, secrets from Azure Key Vault. Let me show you how it actually works. So um, whenever you access a solution and you want to create this new environment variable, then well, you just follow the same steps. So you hit a uh, new more than um, environment variable. And here, once you um, expand the, the list of data types, you can find here this option secret. And the next step is to select the secure store. As said, right now, the only option is the Azure Key Vault. So let's say I want to get the uh, bank password here. And now I need to configure this Azure Key Vault secret. So here I need to provide a couple of information I can only obtain if I have an access to uh, the Azure portal or if, well, the person who has that access shared with me. So I need to navigate to the Key Vault. And here in this overview, you have all the information you need to get. So first the subscription ID. Then the resource group, which is here. Then Azure Key Vault, which is just the name of the Key Vault. It's nothing really complex. And then a secret name you want to obtain. So you need to navigate to secrets and then copy the label uh, that is representing that secret. And save. Now, because I haven't yet configured the Azure Key Vault as I mean, for, to, to be used as an uh, environment variable secret. Therefore, I'm seeing this error here because uh, the platform is simply unable to verify if the user that, I mean, if me as a person who is trying to create that environment variable has actually an access to uh, that key vault. And that is because Microsoft Power Platform is not registered as the provider in that Azure subscription. So what you have to do right now is to simply follow the steps I will be showcasing you. So the first step you need to go is to navigate to uh, your Azure portal and then to the subscription where you already have your key vault created that you want to use or where you want that key vault to be created, right? So now uh, just make sure that you're using the same subscription for both uh, registering that provider and uh, for provisioning or using the key vault in the future. Now, uh, the next step, you need to navigate to resource providers here and just double check if Microsoft Power Platform is not yet registered. So if it is, then you will find it as one of those registered providers. Well, in my case, it's not. So I need to paste it in here and then simply select it and hit the register. Now, this registration is taking some time. Uh, so um, let's just leave it in here. The next step you need to do is to create a key vault if you don't have one. Now, in my case, I already have a key vault, so I don't have to create a one again. Uh, I'll just show you what you have to do once you do have that key vault uh, created. So assuming you have already now created a key vault, then navigate your key vault. And the next step, what you have to do is to grant uh, a read access for the user who is going to create that environment variable. So navigate to access control and here check if your account or the account that you want to grant access for has the required permissions. So this is my account. 
And well, I'm a service administrator, so I have the full access to the resource and I mean to all resources in that subscription. Therefore, that is enough. But what you have to remember, as I said before, you need to grant at least read, ans read access. So for example, um, if I'd like to add an access for John Researcher, who possibly has no access, then I need to grant them uh, this new, uh, this new uh, reader access. So that they will be able to, or he will be able to simply read values or have a read access to uh, any information in that key vault. Right? So right now, once I hit, uh, once I check uh, John, sorry, I need to refresh it, of course. So um, let me just navigate why it's not working. Anyway, uh, right here I can see that uh, John Researcher is a reader, right? So with that, I know that he will be able as well to create those um, environment variables of a type secret. And now the last thing you have to do uh, within the Azure Key Vault is to navigate under the uh, navigate to access policies. So this is the place uh, that is defining what kind of permissions have uh, has different users or groups of users to both keys, secrets or certificates. So we can here uh, really grant on a very uh, deep level of granularity uh, who has an access to us. So for example, me as a Tomasz Poszedek, I have uh, full access to uh, sell to secret permissions uh, as well, almost full access to key permissions and so on for the certificates. But you could as well uh, grant that permissions as an admin have admin has uh, above. So admin can only get keys and can only get secrets. But uh, that person cannot simply do anything else. Like they cannot modify, they cannot delete, they cannot list this information. So they need to really know what is the uh, key of that secret they want to obtain, for example. Without that, they won't be able to get that information from the key vault. And so what you have to do is to add new access policy. And this time you need to select get. That is the only mandatory uh, permission that you need to select. And now the next step is that you need to grant uh, an access to uh, a specific account. And our documentation uh, says about Dataverse that you need to find Dataverse. So once you type Dataverse, then you will find this Dataverse resource provider that has the following GUID. However, uh, the documentation is saying that we need to find a resource provider that has a GUI that starts with 0, 0, 0, 0 something, uh, I think 7. And in the end, it uh, resolves into common data service. So in the end, um, that service that the um, documentation is uh, describing is that one, so the common data service. And this is the uh, principle for whom or for which we need to grant an access. So next hit add and don't forget because I've, I've done that multiple times. Don't forget to save it. So you have to save it. Only then this new, uh, this new access policy is going to be saved. Now let's check if my, uh, if my resource provider is registered. Let's refresh that. Right. So right now Microsoft Power Platform is registered. So what I can do, uh, is to navigate back to, uh, my, Power Platform solution and try to save that once again. All right, now um, it seems that uh, this key is already reserved, so possibly there is uh, something created in uh, the default environment, uh, in the default solution. So let's change that name to, for example, bank password prod, something like that. All right. So right now, because I have registered the provider, I have I've confirmed that my account has at least read access to uh, that subscriptions, so that to, to that uh, Azure Key Vault, and I have registered um, Common Data Service uh, as a principal uh, with the read access to that secrets in that Key Vault. Therefore, I should be able to save it and create right. So with that, I was able to create this new type of environment variable that is called bank password prod. And with that, I can now create a simple uh, Cloudflow. Let's uh, say it will be an instant Cloudflow. 
uh, just to check if if I'm able to uh, obtain that key vaults variable. So the next step, uh, well, I'll just say compose. And here I should be able to see uh, that bank account, but I don't. Now that's interesting. So um, that secret variable is not present here, which is odd. So we can try and to use the other approach from Microsoft Dataverse. Uh, and then here we have this uh, perform, sorry, an unbound action. And one of those unbound actions, there should be uh, the one that is called um, retrieve environment variable secret value, blah, 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 very long. Uh, so now we need to again navigate back to the solutions. Gosh, that is very complicated. Uh, but Let's hope it is, uh, it's going to be fixed soon so that you will be simply able to obtain that environment variable straight or use that environment variable straight uh, the same way as, as you're use, just using the other types of environment variables. But, uh, okay, it's a bank password prod, bank password prod, right? That's, that's the one uh, that we want to use. So. And let's save it and test so that we can see if it works. Now, um, another thing that you have to keep in mind, because this way you're again somehow first obtaining that environment variables value, and then you can pass it on to uh, another uh, action like to the desktop flow action. So uh, because of that, you need to be aware that this information that that action is going to obtain can be seen in the flow install like in the flow history. So if someone navigates the flow runs and then navigates a specific instance, then after clicking on that action, they will be able to see its value. Like I will show you right now. So let's trigger it right now manually. Run that flow. Right right uh sorry that's that's the name that's the name that we need to copy so it's kdw and an underscore so you need to use the internal name or the display name right and with that, you can see that there is the value obtained, right? So that's the very secret value. However, it is visible in the runs history. So what you have to do is to simply navigate to that actions settings and to mark that secure output setting on. So with that, even when you will create a new action that will consume data returned by this action. So where I want to, for example, display uh, that response. Now, which one? I don't remember. Let's, let's, let's just try to add both, both of them. Um, anyways, uh, once now I try to run it, I want to be not only able to preview value of that, uh, variable by expanding the action that obtains this information because uh, it's, it's, it's security configuration, as you will see in a moment, uh, is preventing that. But as well, uh, in a compose, because it's inheriting this behavior, so both the inputs and outputs are secure. So this way, you're at least making it secure that no one will, able, will be able to see information you're acquiring. All right, so um, as I said, I hope that Microsoft is going to fix it soon, that uh, you will be able to use that environment variables the same way as we are using the other environment variables, so that just straightforward to put them into the actions that are going to use them, not using that perform an unbound action uh, as a so-called proxy. Um, yep, and that's it. So um, if you have any questions on how to use these kind of variables or any any questions to whatever I'm, I'm recording and talking about, write them down in comments. Uh, please remember about uh, subscribing to my channel and liking the video. So thank you once again, and until the next time. Bye-bye.